Hello, Adam here. Very glad you're with me again today. And what I thought I'd do today is a nice little church scene. So let's just get All right, I've started today by uh, taking my 16 by 20 canvas and just putting a thin coat of liquid white across the entire canvas, okay? And when I'm done spreading it on as even as I can, what I do is I go back through and I just really work it in like this over the entire canvas, entire canvas. And then one final time, go back over the canvas. All right, today I'm gonna start with uh, the sky and I'm gonna mix up a little bit of a lavender color. I'm gonna take some alizarin crimson, a little bit of Prussian blue, and just mix them right here on the old pipe. Hopefully a little more to the crimson side. Wipe off the old palette knife right there. I've always got paper towels for that. And I'm just going to just tap. Notice I still got the liquid white on my brush from putting that on the canvas. Just tap that in just a little bit. Getting to the color likeness that I like. And I'm just going to start over here in the corner. I'm just going to wisp this in just like this. Okay? Leaving a lot of those little white areas. And we'll come back and blend it in a moment. It's going to have a really nice effect. Bring this all the way down to, oh, probably just past the midpoint of the canvas. I'm going to allow this to get lighter and lighter as we go over. I'm going to stop right there, grab a small one inch landscape brush and just tap some yellow barely just a little and we'll have the sun come from this side over here so i'll just take the brush and just just gently put in a little bit of a yellow glow okay doesn't have to be too much get a little hair just Flick it off, no big deal, all right? Hey, if you've been searching for brushes that don't lose hairs, good luck. Because in my experience, they all do. And that's okay because they're very easy to flick off. Don't discount a brush because of that. All right, lay a little bit more of this sky in over here. Good. I'm gonna wipe that brush out just a little on my paper towel. And I'm going to use this exact same brush. Probably notice I don't clean my brushes during my paintings. That's very intentional. I just like to do it afterwards. I try to have a, an amount of brushes that work for me that keep my paintings looking clean and nice, but I just prefer to clean all my brushes at one time when I'm done. That's me, but you can do it however you would like to. All right, long strokes, finish the sky out. If you ask me, that is a beautiful looking sky already. Okay, I'm going to continue on with my two inch landscape brush. I'm going to start to lay in the, the grass here. And for that, I'm just going to put a little bit of an under color. So I'm going to touch a little bit of brown, a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow ochre. And we're just gonna use that. Just tap. This is just the undercolor for where I'm gonna have this little grassy, oh, it's called a knoll, grassy knoll, right in here. And all you gotta do is simply lay it in, all right? Now notice that I'm laying this in just above the center point of the canvas. Oftentimes paintings just don't look right if they're just too centered, the horizon line, uh, or big elements of the painting that are going left to right. Just don't look great if it's too centered. All right, let's just leave it. Let's just leave it something about like that for now. All right, I'll come back through and start putting the grass in. It's going to touch the green. That's all I'm going to do. Little yellow, little yellow ochre. Just get a greenish looking color for the grass. And same thing. I'm just going to come through and just, just lay it on, just like you would a snowbank or something like that. And you're probably thinking, well, that don't look a whole lot 
like grass? Well, it's going to. It is going to. For what we're going to do here today, this is going to work just fine. And we'll bring it down to somewhere in there. And you could even go like this and pop up the edges. See that? Now it kind of looks like grass right there. You could do the same all throughout in little patches. Just showing you something that you can do. We don't, we don't really need all this in the painting today, but just a little technique. Okay. All right, so the main thing in the painting is going to be an old country church or chapel or whatever you want to call it. So we'll just start right in here by sketching the roof out. I'm not sure how much you can really see that, but I just like to sketch it out. Got my large palette knife here. Right. Hopefully you can see that. I, I really like to take my time on, on buildings. You know, I'm not, I'm not a self-professed building expert by no means, but I believe when I take my time and apply myself that I can, I can put something in here that looks pretty decent. All right, let's put the side of it right here. Good. And right over here, I'll just kind of line in where I think that far edge of the building might be. Okay. All right. You got yourself a little base outline. Come over here and mix up a little bit of a little bit of color for the church. So I'll take a little bit of white and get it over here. I'm gonna take just a little bit of black. I've got ivory black, but whatever works for you, Mars black, or midnight black. Black will work. I'm gonna a little bit of gray. Right? Just for the undercolor. Just you know, just take a little roll on the edge of the knife. And I'll start by the back wall over here. Just put in some color. Try not to touch that green that will come up in there, but if it does, it'll be okay. And get some color for the front, the front wall. And let's see, we'll go ahead and start on the roof now. And for that, I'll take some black. Mix it with a little Van Dyke brown and a little bit of white. And again, a little roll of paint on the end of your knife. And let's start on the roof. I'll start right back here. All right. And let's come over here and make this back eave right here. Just touch it and pull it in a little. That's all we really got to do. All right, now I'm going to come back with white. Pull it out, get some on the end, and let's come back and lay this in over here. At one point, this old church was, was white. But in the setting of the sun and just the weather of it all now, it's, oh, it's just become very weathered, very old looking. And that is perfectly okay. You get a little bit of black from over here coming down, that's fine too. We got the sun from this way, making a little bit of a shadow. All right, now let's just take our knife long ways and just put in here what looks like old boards. Okay, same on this side. 
won't see them too much. They're just little indications. Let's, let's straighten this roof out right here. Good. And a little bit of shadow color coming down right here. Come back through and put our put our boards in there. And you can come through like this, create little lines this way. You could even get a little bit of white if you wanted to, but for me these little shingle lines would just be extremely subtle. Let's get a little bit more black. Let's highlight right here, the edge. We'll highlight this corner right here a little bit. And maybe the back corner, though. I think that's going to be covered up. All right, let's see. We're going to have to have more in it than that. Let's have a couple windows over here. But what I'm going to try is just taking my knife, the little part of it, the large knife, and just touching it, scraping it. Same thing here. Old looking windows. And let's make a door. For a door, I'll take a little bit of brown. A little bit of that old gray color, mix it in there. Put ourselves an old weathered door. Little roll. And how about right here in the middle? Somewhere about right there. Good. We'll say this is a, a double door. A little bit of a line. You might need to get a little bit of light color in there. For that, I'll just run my knife edgeways through a little bit of white. Just a little bit. You can kind of tell that was a, a double door. And then let's put windows here too. Same thing. Right here. Pull down. Right here. Pull down. And they kind of look like little windows. Now we said this was a church. So in my mind, a church always not always, but mostly should have a steeple. We'll put a little steeple right here. We'll come up from this back side over here. Okay. You can probably tell my hand is not that steady. I've always had a little bit of shake in my hand when I'm trying to do stuff, but that don't prevent me from trying things. I hope it don't stop you either. You can certainly do this technique even with a little bit of shake in your hands. Okay, and I'm going to grab my liner brush and just put that in a little bit of this color too. I don't really need to thin it down at this point. Just get a little on there just to dress up this, this steeple a little bit. Bring it to a point right here. And from this angle too. And what else do we need? Well, if it's a church... I think we need a cross. Okay. Just a little cross. All right, I'll go back to my large palette knife and let's see, let's let's work a few highlights in this thing. I just come in with a little bit of white. And maybe a little bit of liquid white that I have right here. Make it a little thinner. And maybe there's a little bit of light coming through. Over the roof. A little bit on this side. And up on that steeple. Maybe even onto the cross a little bit. Okay. Just working with a little. So I like the look of the shine. You can always go back and fix it and 
what I think I'll do now is I'll grab my larger fan brush that I got and come into a little bit of Van Dyke Brown. And let's build a road right here. Probably no surprise there, huh? And just lay on this brown right here. Let it come all the way over. Just past the center point at the bottom. All right. Good. Go back to my two-inch landscape brush and again just touching some green and some yellow maybe a little yellow ochre and we'll come back over let's start right here dress up the bottom of this chapel a little, a little path there where they may come walking into the chapel from the other side and now we'll just bring this grass on down and now you see i'm kind of using the tapping technique this grass come over the edges good setting that road down into the painting that's what we're doing here all right and we'll just put some taps in the rest of this just a little bit Okay, let's grab our liner brush and dip into a little bit of thinning oil right here. And we'll take some Van Dyke Brown. Van Dyke Brown, let's build some fence posts. All right, and we'll just make that pretty thin. Turn in my brush, good. Oh, let's come back here. And we'll just make in several, several posts. All right, your fence posts should get a little wider, All right, a little further apart as you come down. Okay. And eventually they'll get a little thicker as we start to build them. Let's put one more right there. Now, I'm going to take my fan brush again and get a little bit of white. Same fan brush I was using a minute, minute ago. Get a little bit of white and begin to just highlight this some. I'm going to stick a little bit more to the left side for the highlight. Okay left side of that road for the most part. With the grass and a little bit of hill that's going to be right there, uh, it'd be a little darker on this side of the road. All right, back to the liner brush. Okay, so the liner brush, remember we said the, the fence posts have a natural tendency to grow on us. So I'm just going to take a little bit of liquid white, put it right in here. It'll be kind of a brownish white. That's fine. We're going to put some highlights on these posts right over in here. The sun's coming from the right side, so bring that up right there. Just taking, put a little bit of highlight. As you get further back, it's probably less important. Okay. And what else do we need? Well, Tell you what we need. Tell you what we need. We need some boards on this fence post, don't we? I'm right over here. And we'll just drag in some boards. I push a little more and let my boards get thicker as I come down. Do one more. So I start kind of 
really light back here. Right in here, I'll start pushing a little more. See how it widens out. Start right here and make it a little thicker even towards the bottom. Go back to my highlight liner. And let's continue with highlights. All right, I'll just touch the top of these boards. Well, maybe there would be this much highlight. Maybe, maybe there wouldn't. You can always go back and change it up. Always go back and change it up. You can always come back and play with your darks and lights and get them just the way that you would want them. Make this a little darker on this side. Now look, we're gonna, we're gonna bring the post back on this side. See that, now the posts are back on this side of those boards. That's fine, however you wanna. Let's grab the fan brush, dip it into a little bit of green. Come over here and just put a, Little grass, little grass around the feet of these posts to blend them into the painting a little bit. To get further away, it's a little less important. You can do it a little bit though, right? Come up in here and just fan this in a little too. Pulling out these bottom parts really makes it look like it's set into the painting. Good. Now we may come back and work on this whole scene over here in a little bit, but right now what I want to do is turn my focus to some bushes that are going to be in the scene. And for that I'll just come back to some brown, lightly touch it, maybe maybe a hint of black right there. And let's just let's just say there's some old bushes right here. These were probably really nice at one time, but you know, it's an old church. It's been grown up some. And we'll put some over here too, right over in here. Those got dark. That'll be a good thing. We'll lighten them up a little though. Right in here. Just some overgrown bushes. We'll let this one get pretty tall. Okay. Good. You can go back to the fan brush and again, watch when you take the bottoms and just pull them out, it sets it into the painting. And it provides a necessary shadow since the sun coming from here. We'll do the same over here. Now on this side we're going to be a little more intentional about the shadows so I'm going to I'm going to take my smaller landscape brush here one inch and I'm just going to put some shadows in this right here. Dark shadow. That's enough of that. Come back with the big brush. And just blend it in just a little. Good. Take a fan brush. Blend that in a little more. All right. Let's do this. I just noticed this. We, we probably could take a little bit of this brown. And extend this fence this way. See that? Extend this fence. We'll say it even went all the way and connected that way somewhere. Good. Go back to our one inch round brush. And let's come into 
Let's do this. Let's come into some lavender. Look at that. And for that, I will touch some liquid white. Make a nice lavender color right here. Get a little more. Now let's try that. And let's come up over here. And we'll just say at one point these trees were it might have just been little little bushes that have kind of grown up into just overgrown overgrown almost trees at this point. Covers the whole edge of that building. Comes down over in here. And same thing over here. Just some bushes. And down in here, we'll let them remain a little darker, of course. Let's come back with a liner brush and give them a hint of a couple sticks and twigs in here. The same thing over here. Be pretty faint, but you might see a couple. All right. Grab our brush one more time and just stick a couple bushes over these branches. Cut those into the painting. And I think we might need to I need to darken this up some right in here, these bushes. Oh yeah, there we go shadow side right in there some really dark bushes under here sun's going down extremely dark right in there let's grab another brush All right and we'll take some liquid white very tops here and there we'll try to make these things shine in the sun just a little on the edges coming through over here got a little bit of sunshine zipping in touching in various spots like that see that okay let's take our our liner brush come up here with some liquid white on it and get a little bit of this green color let's let's make some flowers bushes look like flowers something like that i'm just going to come right over here just put in some pretty big old grass blades sticking up right there well maybe there'd be a few over here just just kind of popping out in the corner Come up here and get some lavender color. All right, let's see. And let's just do this. Let's just take the brush and just kind of just touch different spots right in here. All right, we'll just say these are some sort of flowery things coming up. Maybe some of y'all look at these flowers and say, yeah, they look like some sort of flower that you recognize. To me, I'm just trying to put some color in here. And that looks pretty good to me. And maybe there'll be one or two popping up from over here. All right, let me go back to a liner brush that had some dark color in it. Take a little bit of this black. And let's do this. Let's come where these fence posts are right here. And let's just drag out a little bit of a shadow. A little bit of a shadow. Okay. I 
I'll come back through and try to blend these shadows in here in a minute. I always think it looks better when you use the light to your advantage making making shadows in your painting. Okay? You can just gently just kind of brush them into the painting like such, especially once you get to the ends of the shadow. Let them come into the painting a little bit. All right. And if there's shadows right there, you might you might see a couple shadows this way too. And maybe there's along this dirt dirt road there's just a hint. A hint of a little grass that's kind of grown up here in the medium. And it's an old dirt road, right? Old dirt road. Oftentimes these dirt roads have a little grass still coming up. And also I'll kind of just blend it back into the painting a little. Okay, we can take and get a little bit of white. And again, just come back with a little bit of shine here and there with the sun's zipping through and hitting our road. A little bit of sunlight. And one more time, I'll take a liner and I'll just try to brighten some of this up a little bit. Oh, you could just really work on those shadows, the light, and the Yeah, when you do this, take your take your time. Get up here at the tops. You know, probably a little shiny at the tops. Setting in right there. Really getting on there good right here. Is, you know, you can just imagine the sun would strike, right? You know, I think we'll, we'll call this one basically complete. Let me come up right here. Try to get a little bit of a shine on that cross, right? Just a little bit. A little bit of shine so that sticks out some. Okay. Well, I think for now we're going to call this one complete. You could certainly keep refining this until it is just a gorgeous, gorgeous painting. But hopefully you picked up a couple techniques today. Hopefully you'll be able to use those in your own painting. And if you like these paintings, you like what I'm doing, please hit the like and subscribe button. It would mean an awful lot to me. Okay. Until next time. Be blessed, and remember, if I can paint, you can too. See you next time.